Norton seems to want to outdo his really impressive track record of the past. So this week we've had another set of drama. Now we don't know of the circumstances that led to this, but it's obscene in any case. It's obscene, and what is even more obscene is Mr. Norton giving some wishy-washy explanation as to what is going on. So he needs to be interrogated more on this because it is an important issue, not be because it is not a single incident. It follows a pattern of behavior that we've come to expect from a leader of his nature, a small-minded leader. And uh, therefore, it, it speaks about a trend in that party, a trend of exclusion, a trend of discrimination, and a seemingly racist tendencies from the leader of the opposition. He's been accused by his own members as being racist. Now, <clears throat> he, I gather there was just uh, another press conference held by our Lilliput. And um, he took with him, first of all, he, he said that, and I'm not gonna go through everything, but some of the most obvious things. He said that APNU AFC would help people to pay rent if they get into government that you shouldn't really be owning homes because the government is building homes that are not too small for people. So you can hear what's going on in the bedroom. Now, how more divorced from reality can you get? For many people, across this country, historically grew up in modest housing. They always aspire to do better and e eventually to build better facilities. The leader of the opposition in the, when, and, and then President Granger had a very modest house until he became president in a very short period. He, and, and there are thousands of Guyanese who started small and then managed to build better facilities. But this is a leader who comes from a party with a track record that since Forbes Burnham died, that they never had a housing program and led to a massive backlog of, of um, people living in, in very terrible conditions and not having the dignity of ownership, even closing down the Ministry of Housing. And then having the PPP making this one of the most vibrant sectors in our economy. And tens of thousands of Ghanis have now, now have a home ownership, land ownership or home ownership because of the policies of the PPP. And, and as recent as the last, the 2015 to the 2020 period, they did very little to enhance that, that um, the, the, the desire of Ghanese. With that track record, he comes to criticize the PPP about its housing policy. And, and how visionless can you be if you don't want people to own things, you just want them to rent all their lives. But he sees a virtue in this. Clearly he has nothing to do, and his advisors should tell him to stay away from, from this issue, because it can't win his party any sympathy in the Guyanese populace at large, among supporters of both parties, except except for the unthinking in, 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 in among, in among, among our myths. So that's one issue that he spoke on. 
and then um, he spoke again on local government elections at their re uh, recently concluded press conference. He said, they are preparing across the country for local government elections, but they're not sure they will contest as yet. Now we are, bec because they want a number of things addressed, but he hasn't named what he wants addressed. So we are about just over a week from submitting our list of nominees for the various local government bodies. And the major opposition party in the country has not made a decision whether it will contest or not, but it's preparing. And it wants a number of issues, phantom issues, addressed because it hasn't said what it wants addressed. This is the state of confusion that that party is in at this point in time. So now what I'm fearful of though is that given what I said before, that they are finding it very hard not only come up to, with, to come up with a list of candidates and many NDCs across Guyana, but you're also having a hard time finding backers for the list that will have a return to what they practice widely in the 2018 elections, local government elections, where they forged the signatures of many of the backers and misled many of them. In the quarantine course in Wim Bloomfield, NDC, you recall that the AFC uh, fooled a number of people. They told them they were signing up to get house lots. And then the people suddenly saw their list, their names as backers for the list in the Wim Bloomfield area. But this was not unique to the Wim Bloomfield NDC. In many other areas, they forged the signatures of the backers. So we have to be very vigilant that this will not repeat itself because they're having a difficult time. Nevertheless, I think the country and his supporters and his candidates must be confused too. Because here they're saying they're signing up statutory forms, maybe, or signing up backers forms, and they're, why are they doing it if they don't know whether they're contesting as yet? This is, this is uh, really not just confusing to the country at large, but must be even more confusing to the people of Guyana. And then Mr. Norton had to venture into the, into the Marriott issue. So last week when I, um, we spoke about the Marriott issue, I explained the reason why we're putting Marriott um, selling Marriott at this point in time. And people can agree or disagree with that. We believe we can maximize the revenue to the treasury and ultimately ownership of a, a hotel does not allow a government to pursue its strategic goal, which is to create employment for people generally, to, to have a world-class health care and a, and, and good quality education to get extend housing and more expand housing facilities available. We believe those are the core functions of government, security, etc. Once there are gaps, once you have the business community being able to, to fill the gap in some of the areas, the investment gap, the government doesn't need to be there except to, to stimulate new investments. So that's the philosophy. And, and we, we can demonstrate why we pursue that philosophy, but it's all to maximize value. Mr. Norton says that the, a proper assessment must be done of the decision, but the Marriott is, um, is profitable.